Lord, now indeed I find Thy power in Thine alone Came and changed the leper spots And it melt the heart of stone Jesus paid it all left a crimson stain he washed he white as and when before the throne I stand in incomplete Jesus died my soul to save my life shall still repeat oh, Jesus paid it all and all to him my own sin had left a crimson stain he washed he white as snow who he washed it white as Who paid my debt? Oh, praise to one who paid my debt and raised his life up from the dead. Oh, praise to one who paid my debt and raised his life up from the dead. Oh, praise to one who paid my debt and raised his life up from the dead. Good morning. Welcome to Henderson General Baptist Church. Uh, for those who I think are online and for those who are here in the church, uh, let me turn this. Hopefully this week uh, everything goes right and we don't have any issues with that. Uh, I will again say, as uh, everybody knows me, uh, knows that uh, I am... Uh, pastor here at Henderson General Baptist Church, uh, and I am not one that discusses uh, politics, uh, you know, not up here anyway, uh, but I do encourage you, if you have not voted, to go out and vote uh, this week. Uh, I think it's just something that we are all called to do. Uh, I just want you to know that what influences my vote is directly from the Bible and, and how I see what life is important uh, to godly people uh, and uh, as we move forward here I just want you to take this opportunity to prepare yourself to worship God in spirit and in truth uh, last week we had some issues with the the songs and us uh, singing and then all of a sudden I lost my camera uh, and uh, but I really fixed my hair up good today and I think everything's going to be okay uh, is it running okay so it's running uh, you guys can hear me right all right, so uh, you're going to be really enthused by the message today uh, because it is an important question that I want you to answer for yourselves through this day as we go to the Lord in worship and prayer. But how does the Scripture influence your daily life? How does Scripture influence your daily life? It's one that is important in the generation in which we live. It is an important question for all of us. It is one that will not make you feel very comfortable at times, 
whenever I go through this message. But I want you to know that in preparation, I didn't feel comfortable. And it's not about our comfort that God is after right now. It's about our commitment to him and his word. And we live in a generation that no longer believes in God's word. We live in a generation that no longer reads God's word. Uh, even those who make a fuss publicly about what we take out of our schools, take out of our courthouses, what we take out of, and, and all of these things that they make a fuss out of, rarely do you see those very same people that are hiding the word in God's heart, the word of God in their heart. They say things and they do the right things, but they're not living the right life. This is an important message today, and it's one that we can say can influence us for the better or for the worse, and it's a decision we get to make. So in and through this moment of our life, may we take this opportunity to pray, and may we take this moment to know that God is still on his throne, and no matter what the outcome on Wednesday or Thursday or the next week, whenever everything is finalized, God will still be on his throne. He will still love you. And he is still sovereign over everything that this world has ever thrown our way. So, Lord, may we be blessed in this moment. May we worship you in spirit and in truth. For those who are here in person, Lord, may we know that we're going to continue to do all the right things for there are many people uh, from within our church family that have been impacted by this virus over this last week. So, Lord, we pray for their safety. We pray for their healing. We pray for their comfort and their rest. Lord, for those who are quarantining themselves because they have been in direct contact with someone else and, and, and they've not tested positive or anything, they're just in quarantine, Lord, I pray your blessings upon their life. Lord, as a church, may we always be committed to love one another. And Lord, whether or not I like a mask or don't like a mask is not the point. The point is, is will I come into the church and love one another? Lord, help us to influence our, our people around us in such a way that we demonstrate the love of God to our people. Lord, I pray blessings upon this church, but Lord, above everything, I pray that we follow after your word more than anything. And Lord, as we pray and, and we sing, and whether we're here in person or online, if we stand up or we sit down or, or we kneel, Lord, however we feel the need to worship you this morning, Lord, I pray that we take this opportunity to do it in spirit and in truth. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Before the king
can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord? No one can stop the Lord. And who can stop the Lord
we thank you for this day that you have given us, and we thank you for the opportunity to be able to praise you in spirit and in truth. Lord, for our generation around the world, may we know that you are King of kings and Lord of lords. For a generation, Lord, that is lost and they no longer see your word as important or true, Lord, may they take a moment. They're just scrolling by on Facebook, scrolling through on YouTube. Lord, maybe someone in person or someone watching online will help to have that influence of your holy word onto their life. Lord, may we take this opportunity to worship you in spirit and in truth. And Lord, for those who give of their tithes and, and offerings online, Lord, may they know that they are doing what you have called us all to do, and may we do it with a cheerful shout before God. For the Lord, those who are in person, may they know that there is a box out at the front of the door. Lord, may they know, and we do that out of worship for you, to give you your tithes and our offerings. Lord, we give you these next moments of our life to be impacted by your holy word. And may it change how we see our everyday living. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So as I look and I see in the Bible, been reading through chronologically uh, over the last couple of weeks, uh, the Bible. And, and as I'm doing that, I, I start seeing something in the book of Genesis. It's influential in my life because what I see is, is that, that they talk about God, but they're always talking about the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. And when they, they look at these other people, they, they talk about it with this influential moment of our life that we go, wait a minute. Why are they saying that? Why aren't they just saying Yahweh, like Jesus? Why wouldn't I just say Jesus? But they're not. They're saying the God of. And what I realize in my life and what we need to realize in our lives is there's a lot of people that are never going to pick up the Holy Word of God. They're not going to read the Scripture for themselves, and they're not going to know who Jesus is. They're not going to live a life that says this is what Jesus says or this is what Jesus does. They're influenced by Scripture through you. And the reality is there's coming that moment that someone who doesn't believe God exists is going to actually come to the place in their life that they're going to crash down to their knees. And when they crash down to their knees, they're going to say, to the God of Caitlin Hensley because I don't know who you are but I know how she is so I pray to you I put that on Caitlin as an unfair statement but I realize in my life there are people who do not believe in Jesus Christ but they see your walk they see your talk they see your actions they see your life how does Scripture impact my everyday life? So when that person who doesn't believe in Jesus Christ, they don't believe the word of truth, but they get to that moment. If you've ever been on an airplane, and had to sit down beside somebody, and you were uncertain if they were saved or not, and you have a conversation, and they say, I'm an atheist, and you're on that same plane, and all of a sudden, a big air pocket hits and it sounds as if the plane is going to come down oh how quickly they want you to pray now see the reality is is there's coming that moment that someone is going to have looked at your life and if scripture is not impacting you on a daily basis whose God are they going to turn to See, for me, I look at it and I say there's a lot of people playing a game with their life. There's a lot of people that are no longer influenced by the Word of God. They no longer see of its importance or test, attest to the, to the reality of what it means. 
As I was looking for this week and I think about what the scripture says in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3. I've made mention of this over the last couple of weeks, but I didn't quote this verse in particular. And for it, it says, For a time is coming when people will no longer listen to sound and wholesome teaching. They will follow their own desires and look for teachers who will tell them whatever their itching ears want to hear. I think it's time now. I had someone here recently that sent me a Facebook message question. It was a question, and I knew the question was loaded. Have you ever gotten a loaded question? You knew when you got the question, you're like, okay, I got to choose wisely how I answer this question because they got an ulterior motive. If you're watching, you had an ulterior motive and you know it. Uh, (laughs) They did. And, And I gave them an answer. They haven't replied back to the statement I gave back to them. You know why? Because I didn't tell them what they wanted to hear. If you come to me asking me what the Bible says, I'm going to tell you what the Bible says. And it doesn't really matter to me if I like it or don't like it. As a matter of fact, I've come to the place in my life that the scriptures that I don't like, as a matter of fact, the scriptures I don't agree with, I'm probably wrong. Laughs my kid right in the front row. She's putting it on her calendar. Dad said he was wrong. (laughs) Because the reality is there's a lot of verses that I read and I'm like, I don't like it. Well, that doesn't make the scripture wrong. But for a lot of us, that's exactly what we're doing. We're living a life of faith that is fake. Our faith life should never be fake. And we live in a generation right now that life was becoming difficult before COVID-19. But I promise you, life was never meant to be easy. I think back to the first part of this year and I think about uh, the moment of us going to have Caitlin's surgery. It seems like a whole decade ago. It's like that song, Who Sings It, about the, this year has been like four Christmas season. I mean, four Christmas season. I wish it was four Christmas seasons. Four w- seasons of winter. Uh, I don't know. It's, it's on K-Love. It's, on, it's a Christian song. But it's talking about this year's. I don't even know what year that song was written in, but it was meant for this year. And I look back and I see the faith journey of my life and I see what's happened and how we're having to, to, to make our way through this, this season of our life as churches, as people. And I, and I look back to that moment and I, and I have people in my life who, who question my faith journey. They wonder where my faith is. And I realize in and through the circumstances of our life, what we tend to do is want to leave out certain scripture that talks about suffering. We want to leave out certain scripture that talks about sacrifice. We leave out certain scripture that don't go along with what's going to make me happy in the moment. I've said it for many years. And almost inevitably, there'll always be somebody that will question it. They get upset when I make this statement because I have people in my life that I will ask the question of, how's your relationship with God? Their response, it's great. How do you know? Because I'm really, really happy right now. My response is, God is less concerned about your happiness than he is your holiness. And what we fail to realize in life is, is that we look for happy. And if I'm happy, therefore, God must be pleased with what I'm doing. And it's okay. And you say, well, shouldn't God be pleased with my happiness? Well, what I see is, is that there are people who are committing adultery that have stood right in front of me and said, this is exactly what God wants. God put this woman with me because God wants me to be happy. You still married? Yep. And you're saying you're having a great relationship with God? Yep. The scripture doesn't say that. So we get upset at what scripture says in our own influential lives, in our own daily lives. And what happens is, is that we no longer allow scripture to influence and to change how we see life. We just want to hear what we want to hear. 
See, the Bible, when I go backwards with this, the Bible tells me in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, all Scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. See, for many, there's not influenced by Scripture any more. There are preachers right now, and I, I've been more and more vocal over these last couple of months, and I'm going to continue to be more and more vocal the more I see it. But when a pastor of a church stands up in front of its congregation and says, you don't have to worry about reading any more of the Old Testament, you don't have to worry about reading any more and worry about the Ten Commandments, you don't have to read the Psalms, you don't have to read Proverbs, you don't need to read Genesis anymore, that's not Scripture, the New Testament is Scripture, and that's all you need. When Paul is writing this, you've got to understand Paul's talking about what we see as the, New Te I mean, the Old Testament. You've got to understand that, that they were not doing away and Jesus fulfilled all the Ten Commandments. We understand that, that the Ten Commandments that, that are on the walls of our, of our courthouses or at the time that they were being taken off. And I remember standing at the courthouse in Dixon one year because the courthouses were taking down the Ten Commandments. And I don't remember who was leading it, but they asked me to speak at it. And I remember standing up there. There was about 50 people standing there. And I remember said, whoever wants to come up, please, before I speak, I just want you to quote the Ten Commandments for me. Just come on up, somebody. <sighs> yep, that's what I got was radio static. Nothing. Because the Bible doesn't say if you put the word of God on a wall and hide it there for all the world to see, you won't sin against God. No, the Bible says when you put the word of God in my heart, that's where I hide it, in my heart. Does that mean that I don't want a Ten Commandments up on a wall? That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, is this false faith that says if it's not up on that wall, therefore I can't follow it or I won't live it. It makes no sense. It has no bearing on my life whether or not there's a Ten Commandments on a wall somewhere. Because if it's not in my heart, it won't matter. It's much like the preacher that I talked about last Sunday. Who in Russia got arrested for spreading the good news in his own house. 20 years and he quoted scripture and wrote it down because that's the only bible he had and and in his cell he just kept putting up pieces of paper of scripture what would i write up and put on my wall see scripture all of scripture is meant to correct to teach to change my life to show me what is wrong in my life so i read at the beginning of this chapter you should know this, Timothy, that in the last days, there will be difficult times. I don't know about you. These are pretty difficult times. These are times that I never saw, never had coming, never thought of. I never, hey, I'm promising you, there was not a class in seminary that ever said, this is how you work through a virus and you separate the congregation and you put tape up and you have services that look different than they've ever been and this is how you do it. They didn't have any of those things. But let's be honest about it. Our churches... Over the last 10, 15, 20 years in the United States of America, as a whole, our churches and attendance has been on a decline. This isn't something new. This isn't something out of the ordinary. What we have found are people who now influenced by their daily living and they will insert God and insert the Bible when it's convenient. See, the Bible says, for people will love only themselves and their money. They will be boastful and proud, scoffing at God, disobedient to their parents and ungrateful. They will consider nothing sacred. 
I mean, all we have to do is look around in our own country, in our own back door, and look around and see the amount of things that are held sacred that are no longer sacred. Think about the church. Most people who know anything about church knows that back in the day, we didn't lock a church door. The church doors were always open. Why? Because people, all people, whether they went to church or didn't, held the church as sacred. They would come in and pray. They would come and sit down at a, at a pew and just, and just worship God even when no one else was around. Now we have alarm systems because nobody holds it sacred. And we, and we see this mentality that the Bible is no longer held sacred in our lives. For many of us to be able to say, I'm going to write up on a wall all the scriptures. I know how many pieces of paper would I have. We don't have time in our everyday life to actually read God's word. We tell people we read it. We tell people, well, I've read it once or I've read it before. And we go on with our everyday life. And what influences more is how many likes do I have on Facebook or how many likes do I have on Instagram? Or who's going to like me now or who's going to like this and whether or not I'm going to be influenced in that kind of way. For some people, they spend more time reading comments of a post than they do God's word. Did you hear what so-and-so said about so-and-so? And I've read the comments. There's 200 comments on this post. What do you hold sacred in your life today? Is the Word of God really sacred in your everyday life if you no longer had the Bible in your life? If they come out and proved and you knew without a shadow of a doubt the Bible was no longer true, what would you do different tomorrow? Some of us would say we wouldn't do anything different. And hence the problem. The problem is, is for many people today, they're not allowing the Bible to truly influence their everyday life. For instance, Matthew chapter 28, it reads this. All authority has been given to me under heaven and under earth. Jesus says, therefore, go into all the nations. And yet our churches are filled with people who say, isn't there enough to go and do in our own place? By people who aren't doing anything. Because they wait for the call of God instead of listening to the command. The command of God is to go. You don't have to have a calling on your life. There's the calling. Go! And yet, oftentimes, we don't allow the influence of Jesus Christ to run through our life. Someone recently posted something on Facebook. Uh, it, was a, it was a post about uh, God. It was about the Bible. They, they put a thing up there, and, and Heather sent them a message about, I, I love that you did that. And they said, you know, what's amazing to me is I can put a picture of myself and I'll get 200 likes. I put a scripture up, I get five. Yup. Absolutely. So what's going to rule your life? Likes or the Word of God? So I look at it and I say these people, that they don't hold anything sacred. He goes on. And he says, they will be unloving and unforgiving. They will slander others and have no self-control. They will be cruel and hate what is good. This shouldn't be called 2 Timothy chapter 3. This should be called 1 United States of America chapter 1. Because this is where we are. To say that we're influenced or not influenced and what we have to have are Christian people who not only do it on Sunday morning and proclaim the good news of Jesus on Sunday, what we need are influential people every single day of their life that is being influenced by Scripture so much. The Bible says they will betray their friends, be reckless, be puffed up with pride, and love pleasure rather than God. And let's be totally honest about this. We've been doing in-person services for a while now. We do high risk and we do low risk. The high risk people are those who we put into the higher age category that's been coming. I promise you this, the consistency of the number of people that show up for that service are really, really consistent. They're, they're like 
they're like ivory soap, 99.944%, whatever that is, they're for certain they're going to be here. For in person for here, we'll run anywhere from one week we'll have six to we'll have 40. Online, we'll run anywhere from 20 views at a time to 30 to 40. And it's all over the place. Why am I making this statement? I'm making this statement because what we find is a generation of people who are going to attend or they're going to be online at a certain time when it's convenient. Because ultimately we look for what makes us happy, not what makes us holy, to live out a life that says, this is what I want to do, this is what's convenient for me. And when it's convenient for you to be, then it's everybody should be at church. But when it's not convenient, then, oh, I'm not going to be online or I'm not going to be. Because, see, the Bible scares me. They will act religious, but they will reject the power that could make them godly. And the Bible says stay away from people like that. You know, this word power, it's a word that I studied uh, many years ago. Uh, it's a word called dunamis. It's, it's Greek. I don't use a lot of Greek because I don't know a lot of Greek. I know this word. This word dunamis is important to me. You've all heard the story about Jesus walking through the crowd and, and this woman with an issue comes up and touches the, the hem of his garment, right? And then all these people, and Jesus turned around and goes, who touched me? And the disciples are like, dude, what? Everybody's touching you. What are you talking about? He goes, no, who touched me? And the Bible says, because this virtue left out of me, he said, virtue has left me. This, this word virtue or power, according to which translation you're, you're using, it's the same Greek word dunamis that you have right here. This power, this virtue. It's a transformational thing that happens in and through our life because they will act religious. They will say the right things at a certain time. They will say a prayer when the preacher's around her. They'll say the right words when so-and-so's around her. They act differently, but, but they're refusing to allow the influence of God's word to change their life. See, for us today... The Bible is meant to give us power, to give us virtue. So when other people come in contact with you, the power, the virtue of God's holy word leaves out of you and goes to them. Here is not the power of God's life working in and through you. Back before I got called into the ministry, I was driving to Indianapolis Every week, every week to go to school. I was going to ITT. I was going to become an electronics and become rich. I drove a stick shift truck. It was a Ford Ranger, four cylinder. Yeah. And it would clank. Love that truck. I'd have that thing in overdrive until all of a sudden somebody would come right up next, right behind me, boom, like that. I'm like, there's, there's, a, there's a, you just go around, go around. No, they got to stay right here like that. You ever have somebody come right like that? You're like, what are you doing? Go around me. You don't want to tap the brakes because they're going to see you tap the brakes. You got a stick shift. All you got to do is downshift. Drake, don't ever do that. It's really, really dumb. Remember the agitation I used to feel when I would drive a vehicle years ago? The amount of stupid stuff that I did. And there come a point in my life that I realized, wait a minute, is the Bible going to influence me or not? Am I supposed to hate people or love people? I don't like the scripture. There's a lot of people I'd rather hate. You're supposed to forgive that person. I don't want to forgive them today. I'll think about it tomorrow, God. I know that I'm not the only one that has thought those kind of things, and yet this is exactly what is happening in our life. When we get to the place that we no longer hold Sunday as sacred, we no longer hold His Word as sacred, we no longer allow the Word of God to influence my everyday life and hold it sacred, that the verses of the Bible that I disagree with, I'm probably wrong.
They are the kind who work their way into people's homes and win the confidence of vulnerable women who are burdened with the guilt of sin and controlled by various desires. See, for us, the Bible says something very intriguing. Such women are forever following new teachings, but they are never able to understand the truth. These teachers oppose the truth. And he says they are deprived minds and have a counterfeit faith. What do you hold sacred today? Do you look at the Bible and say, I wonder where are they going to be? What's the next step? What's the next thing? What influences your life every day? When someone bumps up against you, what power, what virtue is leaving out of you on a daily basis? How are you allowing the scripture to influence your life? Or you read just enough of it that when you come to the place in your life, you realize, I just have itching ears. I just want to hear what I want to hear Lord please let the preacher say he all God cares about is your happiness <laughs> I promise you turn on the TV get on Facebook scroll through YouTube you will find a preacher speak, speaking that stuff today right now it won't be this preacher do I want to be happy all the time yep I do Am I? Nope. But I realize God is still there and he's still holy and he still loves me. And that he's still on the throne and I hold this day sacred. I hold the Bible sacred that I set apart time of my life every day to read his word, not just to have up here, but to move in here. Because some of the people I know, they know more scripture than I do. They have more scripture memorized and some of those same people are some of the meanest people I've ever met in my life. So because I have it up here doesn't mean that it influences me down here. And until it influences me here, the rest of the world around me, as I'm going, it's not going to influence them either. So I have a major challenge for you today. This challenge is important. I want you to continue reading the Psalms. Yep, the Psalms. For every single family, I want you to shut off one hour a day your social media and take that hour and do something influential for the glory of God with your own life. I want you to continue asking this question, how does Scripture influence my daily life? But Then I want you to add something new. Which Scripture do you need to pray about today? See, this is an important question. It's one that we should all think about what about scripture do I need to pray about is there a scripture that I have in my mind that God keeps telling me to forgive somebody and I'm not going to forgive them maybe that's the scripture maybe you're sitting here or you're online right now and you're saying I'm worried I'm worried and you're rubbing your your fingerprints right off of your of your thumbs because you're twiddling so much you're so worried and the scripture says worry about nothing Maybe there is a faith issue in your life. And maybe you need to decide what is above all things in your life. Yeah, I could mention a lot of things that people put in front of God, in front of church, in front of what is sacred. But that's for you to do at this moment. So as this song is played, I pray that whether you're at home, maybe you take this moment just to to bow your head and to pray to God and say, God, what is this guy talking about? What scripture do I need to look at? Maybe you're sitting here today and you just need to stand your feet or bow there or or sit right where you are and just just close your eyes and say, what scripture, God, is that? Am I rebelling against? What, What am I not following in your word? I think it's a fair assessment to say that a majority of people right now claiming to be Christian have rejected Matthew chapter 28, the end of that chapter. 
They wait for an extra call of God to go out into the world and to influence other people for the glory of God. They wait for some calling, some different calling. Oh, it's a, it's a different calling. No, it's a command. Others, they're waiting on some calling to forgive. There is no call. There's a command. Which scripture are you rebelling against that God is saying, here it is, take it. Maybe for some, it's just a promise God's given. But the circumstances of your life are telling you otherwise. What are you going to place above all other things in your life? Will you allow the Word of God to take first place in your day in and day out task to influence who you are and what you do? Above all nature and all created things, above all wisdom and all the ways of man, you were here before the world began. Above all kingdoms, above all of all wonders the world has ever known, above all wealth and treasures of the earth, there's no way to measure what you were, and crucified, laid behind a stone.
stumbled on the ground You took the fall I thought of me Above all. This morning, this morning, I don't want to hear the echo. <laughs> Thank you, mute button. I give you this one last example. Recently read, and I see it oftentimes, that the problem with our generation is participation trophies. If I think a sports event is what my is the problem with our world today, then I live in a very, very secluded world. The problem with our world today is not participation trophies. The problem with our world today is, is that we've put sports above the Bible and church. The problem isn't whether or not you get a trophy today or I get a trophy tomorrow. The problem is, is we no longer hold sacred the Word of God. See, sports is not going to change who we are each and every day. Much like all these other events that come in our life, what we do is we never hold sacred the things that deserve to be sacred. So I look to you today and I ask the question, are you going to allow the influence of God's holy word into your life this week? And if so, how? Will you pray the scripture to the place in your life that it changes how you see God? Will you allow it to influence you? And will you allow the things in your life that are not right and not holy for the scripture to say you need to change that? Are you willing to change for the glory of God? Lord, I pray that in this tough message today, that for those who continue to hold the word of God as sacred and they read your word every day, that they, that they continue memorizing and allowing the word of God to influence their everyday life. Lord, I pray blessings upon their life and they, they feel the happiness, the joy, the, the, the rest and the peace in the scripture. For others, Lord, who are agitated with this and say he's putting too much emphasis on reading the Bible. He's putting too much emphasis on, on, on church and he's putting too much emphasis on these other things. Lord, I pray that, that they would take this week and reflect upon what the Word of God truly says. Lord, that those who have come in person, for those who are online right now, Lord, may they feel your presence and experience your peace. That, Lord, we will realize that the most influential thing that I can do for my family is to demonstrate the love of God through the Word of God and to demonstrate to my family how holy and sacred the Word of God is. Lord, we desire to allow the Bible to be our influence. And yet, Lord, we make statements that are outside the tr truth of your Word and we cast blame for other things. Lord, if the people who are called by your name will humble themselves and turn from their wicked ways, you will heal their land. So, Lord, I pray that first and foremost, each and every person that has heard this message would humble themselves before you. And that, Lord, they would hold sacred your word. Lord, may you bless and may you keep and may your face shine upon each person here and those online. May they know that they are loved and may they know that I am going to continue praying for them. And Lord, may we all be influenced by your word this week. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.